Um, so yeah, hello, welcome to Cert Manager Can Do Spiffy, question um, mark. I've added a subtitle here. This is gonna vary a, a, a bit from maybe what the description said. Uh, the reason for that is that there are two people listed on here. Uh, one of them was meant to be doing this and that one isn't me. Um, unfortunately, Tom went on holiday to Cuba last year, which he didn't realize makes you ineligible for a US Esther, so he couldn't be here, he couldn't get a visa in time. So you get me, US approved. Uh, I'm Ash, I'm a senior software engineer. I'm also a maintainer on Cert Manager, which is handy because I'll be talking about Cert Manager. Um, I've added all the ways you can contact me. Maybe if you'd like to contact Tom and say, sorry, you couldn't be here, I'm sure I'd appreciate that. Um, but you can reach out to me too, I've all, the, all the usual things. I'm happy to talk about anything. I'm also happy to talk uh, after this. I really like this little venue and it'd be nice to stand out there for a bit. Um, so I've had to change a fair bit about what Tom had originally. He conceived this idea, he, he got all of this submitted and all that stuff, uh, but he had a lot of it relevant to him. So he had this joke back when he had hair, you can see he no longer does. I on the other hand am clinging on to still having hair. I've only got a couple of years left and then I won't have a choice anymore. So the joke didn't work. Some things had to change here. Uh, what didn't change is that it's about cert manager uh, by and large, right? Um, I wasn't going to say who here knows cert manager, but since there's a few, only a few people, who here knows cert manager? Anyone? Give me your hands up. Yeah, everyone knows cert manager. Great. Um, it's always nice. It's always nice to see that. Um, so it, it definitely has quite a lot of users. Like we see that people treat cert managers like a standard part of Kubernetes when they set up a cluster. Uh, that's a great feeling. Um, it means that you know it's solving a problem that people actually have. Um, I was going to do a really quick overview to make sure we're all on the same page. I'll still do that, but I'm going to rock it right through it since literally everyone raised their hand. Um, but first of all, like Cert Manager is the easiest way to manage certificates in a Kubernetes cluster. This is what we put on every release that we make. Um, it's a change that I made a few releases ago. The reason for that is, number one, that this is like the thing that we abide by. This is what we're trying to do. This is the problem we're trying to solve. The other part of it is if you share a release, a GitHub release on social media, the preview image that GitHub generates will include the first line. So it's kind of a hack if you're releasing open source software to have a, a nice intro that describes the project. Um, if you know Cert Manager, then you'll know certificates are used for TLS and SSL, if you want to call it what it was called a while ago. Um, and most things need it, right? That's why Cert Manager is so popularly used. Uh, it's because if you're, especially if you're running a public facing service, but if you're running anything else, you probably need a certificate to do your thing. Uh, and Cert Manager helps with that. It's also worth pointing out that as of, well, fairly recently, as of the end of last year, we're in our CNCF incubating project. We were in the sandbox for a while, but we're moving on up. Um, we solve a fairly unique problem in, in the cloud native landscape. Um, See, Cert Manager kind of stands alone in what it does, and, and it's really cool to be part of the CNCF, and they provide a lot of support. And it's a good, another good marker that you sort of we're solving a problem that people have. Um, so, again, I'll, I'll rock it through this, but the basics are Cert Manager adds CRDs for certificate-related things. So the, the sort of core selling point, if you can have a selling point for an open source project, is that it does certificates in the way you would expect if you're used to Kubernetes. Um, if you've written a pod or a deployment, you can write a issuer or a cluster issuer, and you can write a certificate. So your issuer says how to get a certificate, and your certificate resource says what you want in it. So this is an example for example.com. Um, your issuer, you can see, is referred to in an issuer ref. Well, there are plenty of issuers that you can use. You don't need to use the CA issuer that I just showed. You could use HashiCorp Vault, uh, Acme or Let's Encrypt, uh, Venify, uh, TLS Protect, which is my employer. Um, there are many options for this, and you can write your own as well. You're not limited to just the ones that are in core. There's an external thing, and you can do your own if you feel so inclined, and we fully support that. Um, I'd highlight as well a lesser used thing is that Cert Manager can totally issue CA certificates as well. Uh, most people we understand, we don't have telemetry or anything, so we don't know for sure, but most people use Cert Manager to get Let's Encrypt certificates for services. But you can do private PKI in Cert Manager today. If you're running it, you can already do this. And actually, that's kind of cool and underused. 
So like, if you're using Cert Manager for Let's Encrypt, then you have to deal with the Let's Encrypt rate limit. Maybe that's not like a huge concern for you, but as scale grows, the rate limits start to mean more. And that's by no means a ding on Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is one of the best things on the internet, but it's a problem you have to think about. So running private PKI, at least for your test environment, is actually probably a pretty interesting thing to consider. It also lets you do other kinds of certificates, which is uh, an interesting proposition we'll come back to. Well, this talk isn't just about Cert Manager itself. Uh, I'd like to draw attention to the Cert Manager and Friends diagram that I made here very quickly and done a very low budget. Again, I was drafted in fairly late into the process here. Um, but it's also about other Cert Manager stuff, right? It's not just Cert Manager that we do. It's a GitHub organization with other sub-projects that do other things that are useful to you. If you have certificates in your cluster, probably at least one of these projects is going to be useful um, today if you're not running it, right? Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of interesting ones, but there's more that I won't mention. Um, there'll be a link later if you wanted to check out any more. The first is Trust Manager, and this one is by far, I think, the most important one. If there's anything that you take away from anything I've said today, it's that you should probably be giving Trust Manager a go, especially if you're running Cert Manager, because, well, you'll see why. But um, Trust Manager, I, I genuinely think it could be the next Cert Manager, and it's solving a problem that some people don't even know they have. Um, trust me when I say I feel really weird quoting myself, but getting a certificate is only half the problem that you have. So you can use Cert Manager, you get the certificate you need, and that's great, your server can present it to clients, that's, that all works, that's what many people do today. But the question you then have to answer is, how does the client know that your certificate was legitimate or valid? And that's the problem of trust. Um, we manage it using Trust Bundle. It's like a, a blob of certificate data that describes what you trust. Uh, all of your devices have one, this laptop does, my phone, your phones. Uh, all of your containers have one too, most likely, if you're not using Trust Manager or some other solution. And usually the way they have it is you bake it in at build time. So when you build your container, you build from Debian or Distroless or whatever, and you add a CA certificates package. That means that to update it, your time to update is actually the time it takes to rebuild your container from scratch. And that's maybe a little bit scary. Um, I'll come back to that, but essentially what I'm saying is Trust Manager is like Cert Manager, but for trust, as you can probably guess from the name. So you specify a bundle resource this time, and you'll get a config map out that has the, bundle, the trust bundle that you need. Here's an example. Again, it's just YAML. Um, you specify a list of sources which tell Trust Manager where to get your certificates from, and then a target, which is a config map where everything will be written to. Um, I'd especially like to highlight the use default CAs thing here because this is new, very new, like it was released on Friday, kind of new. Um, this is the first time I'm publicly speaking about it, so I guess this is an announcement. Uh, but essentially, this is, this is the ability to include a publicly trusted bundle in your trust manager bundle. So that's the kind of thing that you're getting if you're building from Debian or um, Distrilis or anything like that. So this is the thing that like, enables use of trust manager anywhere. Um, the key really is that we've spent a lot of time thinking about how to design this such that updates of this are always safe. So as of Trust Manager 0.4.0, which released on Friday, any trust bundle we publish ever in the future with any updates that are required, you know, it's all coming from Debian ultimately, will work with any version of Trust Manager. We've built it in that way because it needs to be built that way. You need to be able to update this stuff. And you don't want to get to a situation where you need to update your trust bundle in a hurry and then realize that you have to update Trust Manager as well. Like you, you can just use the version you're running, even if it's out of support, even if it's years old, and you'll always be able to update. And by doing that, you don't need to rebuild your entire container estate. If you're already using Trust Manager everywhere, you can just mount, you're mounting the config map that comes out of Trust Manager. You don't need to rebuild a thing. You just update the bundle, you might need to redeploy things to pick up the new trust bundle, but actually your, your time to disaster recovery is, is minimal in that case. I, I think a lot of organizations don't realize the risk that they're in at the moment with trust bundles baked into containers. There's been upstream work on this, and we'll try and integrate with that as well, but I guess I'm, this is, as a warning, like 
oh my God, why, why are people not talking about this more? Um, but like, aside from all the doom and gloom, I'm not trying to be too doom and gloom about it. Like, Trust Manager also enables private, private BKI, and that's you know, cool as well. I've said that Cert Manager has support for it. So does Trust Manager. It's solving problems that you might not even know you have. That's the, that's the sort of publicly trusted bundle thing. Uh, but if there's one thing that you try from anything, I say try Trust Manager. Like, it really is pretty easy to use. And the more people use it, obviously, the better it will be. The same has happened with Cert Manager. Cert Manager is battle tested now, and it's come from user feedback. Trust Manager can be the same thing, and I genuinely think it is important. Um, so we'll step away from the world of Cert Manager just a little bit, and we'll go on, we'll look at a story. Uh, and this is a slightly different tack to what I've been talking about so far. Again, I'd like to highlight the, the image that comes with it. This is AI generated, because every talk has to have something like that. I believe Tom's prompt for this was a developer dealing with keys. Uh, <laughs> I kind of like it. Um, so imagine a scenario, like I'm sure everyone's been here or done a fairly simple application that needs to talk to object storage in some way. That could be S3, it could be GCS, it could be Sivo, of course. Um, the, we've actually, if you've been here for the past few talks, a lot of people have been talking about this like identity problem and this access control problem and all that. And the simple solution to this is Kubernetes secrets, and that works fine. If you're running on your laptop or a small deployment, that works fine. If you're running in the cloud, if I'm running in AWS, say, and I need to access S3, I've probably got some role that I can leverage to access the thing. Like my pod will have an IAM role, and I can get S3 access through that. And sometimes that's fine. Again, I don't want to be the doom and gloom person that's like, oh my god, you need to worry. Um, in, in small deployments, that's totally fine. If it works for you, great. But things get more complicated than that, especially when you're talking multi-cluster and multi-cloud uh, or hybrid infrastructure where you've got on-prem and cloud stuff. And especially if you're looking at things like zero trust that's been mentioned uh, recently. Uh, if, you, if you need to rotate secrets quickly or have short-lived secrets, um, or whatever you do that might lead to more secrets being created, it all sort of proliferates, and you end up with more of everything, which ultimately leads to more keys, which leads to that AI-generated gen image of a guy worrying <coughs> about keys. Um, so maybe we need something else here. And I'm not here to present the one true way to solve everything. Uh, I've certainly not built that. Cert Manager hasn't built that. But it's worth thinking about. Uh, I'd like to plant the seed of the possibilities here. If we get away from the idea of any one cloud provider's identity system and uh, sort of have something that maps over the top of it all, we can maybe do some interesting stuff here. An X509 can be a building block here. That's the certificates we use today. Uh, but it doesn't fully solve the problem because if I've got a certificate that identifies example.com, that's not necessarily a meaningful identity that I can use to make authorization decisions with. Um, so people are thinking about this, and one of those groups is Spiffy, which is the other thing that was mentioned in the title. Um, so, so what is Spiffy? Like, We should probably dive into that. Again, since there's so few of us, who's heard of Spiffy? Again, lots of hands. Like that, that's great. Um, so Spiffy describes itself as a universal identity control plane for distributed systems. By that, they mean it's a specification for getting and using identities. Um, specifically, um, handling the sort of grubby bits of it, so rotating them, replacing them, how you trust them. And it, it uses X509 natively. I'm not going to talk much about JWT because Cert Manager doesn't deal with those, and they're kind of strictly worse than certificates anyway, than X509 certificates. Um, but the idea of Swiffy is that it aims to be a universal identity. It aims to do that thing that I was just talking about, where we have this thing that's abstracted from any cloud provider. And this is what it looks like. Um, or at least this is what an ID looks like. It's not the whole specification, obviously. Um, you have some trust domain, which is probably your organization. It could be example.com. It could be jetstack.io. It could be Sivo, of course. Um, and, and then after that, you can sort of embed any details you like. It's just, it's just an identity. Here we're using a Kubernetes namespace and a service account. It could be anything. Um, specifically, if we embed this into a uh, X509 certificate, 
then that's an identity we can use. And we could talk about MTLS or like other systems, but it's a thing that we, it's a building block we can start with. And actually, the potential here lies in the universality. It's, if, if this could apply in more places, the power increases exponentially. The, the more places you can use your spiffy ID once you've got one, the more power you have. And it's not there yet. I, I don't want to say that I'm selling like some complete solution. I'm not selling anything, obviously. But like, I don't want to say this is a complete solution that you can run with today, because it isn't. Frankly speaking, it isn't. But it is really worth thinking about. Um, if we got to a future where Spiffy or some equivalent standard enabled some universal identity and cloud providers supported it and all this, it would be really cool. Because then this problem of secret management becomes, well, we have this identity. In Spiffy, they call it the, the bottom turtle, like the, the turtle at the bottom of the stack of turtles that allows us to do everything else. Um, if we get to that world, then we can just fetch these secrets transparently. Um, there's an internal jet stack demo, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to try and do a demo. I'm not going to do that to myself when I'm jet lagged and <laughs> last minute. But there's an internal jet stack demo of transparently accessing an S3 bucket from Google Cloud using Spiffy. Like you don't need to do anything else. You don't need to change your application code. You just go out and you can talk to S3 using credentials for an entirely different cloud provider. And that works because it's, you exchange for a Spiffy ID and it works going forward. Um, it, it, it's cool. It's a cool thing to think about and it's a cool thing to play with, which leads nicely into CSI driver Spiffy, which is another cert manager subproject. Um, this is the quote that we use for that. I, I wanted to have a quote for every section. Uh, it transparently delivers Spiffy identities to Kubernetes pods that mount uh, this particular CSI driver, by which we mean it's keeping things simple. So you just ask for a CSI driver Spiffy mount, and that's what you get. You don't need to run anything else. Spiffy has a reference imp implementation. That's a, a tricky word to say when you're jet lagged. Um, implementation called Spire. And Spire is great and does everything. It does, it does the whole Spiffy spec. But it requires a database. It requires running something that you might not be running today. Um, CSO driver Spiffy doesn't need that. It needs Cert Manager, and it needs to be installed. But you can kind of play with it today and see what happens maybe start to build something around this and see where it goes. Again, I'm talking about the possibilities that could come. Like, it's worth exploring this. Um, and ag again, it's just X509 certs. Like, um, as I said, I'm not talking about JWT specifically, but like, X509 can do this stuff, and uh, the technology's there today. So it's, it's worth experimenting with. Spiffy seemed to think so, because we're on the spiffy.io website. Like, you can see Cert Manager CSI driver over there. Um, that's a cool shout out. Like, um, it's, it's, it's a sign that we're doing something that's worth considering at least, right? And that's all I'm saying. Consider this. If you consider Cert Manager can do CA certificates and Trust Manager can distribute them to your Kubernetes namespaces that you have already, and CSI Driver Spiffy can get the identities that you need based on your namespace or your service account, then together that kind of looks a lot like Spiffy without needing the database and the the thinking about it. It's quite a simple way to get started. And, and the obvious question is, well, is that spiffy? And it, it isn't spiffy. Like, I, I said it's hard to say, but it's definitely not. Like, the spiffy spec is much bigger than this and includes a gRPC API, and you, you actually probably do need that database. But it's something to think about. And even if you don't use all of this to do spiffy, well, it's still useful stuff. So manager people are still using it today, obviously. Trust Manager is something that people should be using, and CSI Driver Spiffy is at least planting the seed that we can think about and, and see what happens with it. So, in summary, as I said before, Cert Manager is not just Cert Manager. Um, a lot of people are using it, less people are using the sub-projects, and they have a lot of value. They incorporate a lot of learning that we had as a project as, as Cert Manager grew. Um, we still care about Cert Manager. Like, I'm not, I'm not announcing that we don't care about it or anything. Like, it's a huge deal. Um, but we care about the other stuff too, and we think there's a lot of potential there. And it's all open source, and um, and Cert Manager obviously is part of the CNCF, so it's stuff that you can go out and use. And if anything, go and try Trust Manager, because there really is a lot of potential there. And if you think about how, how Trust stores are updated, 
it, it scares me to think about the kind of deployments that are out there with, with that kind of problem in. Um, I've got a warning, if you, want, if you want to scan a QR code, now's the time to get your phone and point it at the, at the screen. Uh, if you don't want to do that, because no one's pointing the phone at the screen, I would implore you to, if, you've not, if you use Cert Manager at all, if you've heard of it, if you, if you have a GitHub account, please go onto the Cert Manager repo and drop us a star, because it now displays as us having 10K stars, but we've actually got 9,500 or something when I checked just before this. And our collective egos as maintainers requires that we get to that 10K mark, because it'll be really cool. Um, <laughs> like, so please, if, if you could go and star it, please do. Um, yeah, if you wanted to scan the QR code, there you go. If you, if you, if you um, don't want to scan it, then there's a link below. Essentially, all of the documentation for any of these projects is on the CERT Manager website. Uh, we try and keep everything there. Um, so if you want to see what other ones we, what other sub projects we have, or uh, if you want to read more about Trust Manager or CSI Driver Spiffy, go there. And also, the, the docs website is, is, it takes a lot of work to run that, so go and just check it out. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I, I, I hope it didn't seem too last minute with all the last minuteness that went into it. Um, please go and try Trust Manager. Please keep enjoying Cert Manager. And thank you for listening. If anyone has any questions, I'll be more than happy to chat or go chat out there or anything. So thank you very much. <laughs>